there are other ways of having estrogen in our body, and we've talked already, which is great, about vaginal dryness, which actually affects around 70% of women. The studies vary, some say 50%, some say 70%. I reckon most women will have it if they don't have any hormones in their body. Because Sorry to out everybody and interrupt, but can everyone, anyone put their hands up if they have a dry vagina? That's a lot of, about 70% oh. there. So, yeah, and it's really common. And um, a lot of even physician uh, um, doctors think, oh, it's only about sex. So if they're not sexually active, it doesn't matter. Well, of course it matters. I see women who can't sit down, they can't wear underwear, they can't go swimming, they can't ride a bike. So it's really important and it's one of those symptoms as Heather says some symptoms change hot flushes can improve with time but vaginal dryness doesn't unfortunately so for those of you who've got it you've got to have treatment and you've got to persist with treatment as well and um, what does that treatment look like so, I, yeah, yeah. I've, had, I've had topical um estrogen based yes. um moist internal moisturizers and I've also um used like things like Hylofem which basically is like you get up in the morning you moisturize your face you do the same for you. So, yeah, so, so there's non-hormonal and hormonal treatments. So there's non-hormonal treatments. Sam has already said things like KY jelly, which should be banned from a, as a treatment. There's lots of lubes and moisturizers out there that are really horrible, and, and Sam can, I'm sure, explain. But there are others that are very good, um, that can be really helpful as moisturizers. Like you say, you moisturize your skin, you can moisturize internally, and there's lubricants as well for, for when people have penetrative sex. There's also hormonal treatments, so local estrogen, which can be a pessary, it can be a cream, it can be a ring, um, like a little plasticky ring that gets inserted. And even women who've had estrogen receptor positive cancers can still usually use localized estrogen. And this causes a lot of confusion for women, but also for doctors, because if you look in the inserts, I don't know if you read the inserts, it would have said can cause stroke, heart disease, breast cancer, oh my God, like why would you use it? But actually, this is irrelevant and it's wrong and it, it shouldn't be there at all. Um, because the absorption is very low, you get a bit of absorption of estrogen the first day and then it's the same as placebo. So it, and it's a really, really low dose. Vagifem, which is this little pessary, is 10 micrograms. So it's a very, very small dose and it's very safe. So usually a combination of the local estrogen with a really good moisturizer can transform some people's lives. So you suggest that if anyone is struggling with vaginal dryness, not to be afraid to go speak to yeah. your doctor or your oncology team and know what your options are. Absolutely. I'm someone who is estrogen positive. My cancer was estrogen positive, but I've used local um, yeah. estrogen pessaries because I'm on tamoxifen, so actually it cancels it out. It's very safe. Yeah. Um, but I had these discussions with my oncology team. So you don't have to suffer in silence. Go and speak to your team yeah. about what is best for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important if you don't get the right advice from your first doctor, then see someone else. I am not going to finish this panel without talking to our resident sex expert about the good stuff. <laughs> so, Samantha. Yeah. So, I, as a young woman about town, got thrown into menopause when I felt like I was at the prime of my sexual peak. I was living much like you, <laughs> Lydia, out on the town. I was like, hey, boy, come home with me. And then all of a sudden, you're like, please don't come home with me because one, you're not going to be able to get it inside me because I'm too dry. And two, when you do, and then we cuddle after, I'll be sweating on you all night, tossing and turning. <laughs> and it actually really was damaging to yeah. my sex life because I was like, what's the point? Yeah. And actually, that's quite sad. If a woman in her 30s who's single, you want to find love, you want to find a relationship, but it's such a damaging thing to that. So I want to talk to you because one of the best things that I had from my doctors was regarding self-pleasure. Yeah. And she was like, use it or you'll lose it. And that was the best piece of advice I've ever been given. Yeah. A wank a day keeps the menopause away. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Tell us more. Well, I'm constantly talking about orgasms. I don't like the phrase use it or lose it because unfortunately a lot of women can't use it. Unfortunately, if they've got vaginal atrophy, which is where the vagina will shrink because of the depleting estrogen. Um, and that's why we've got to give them a bit of love. Um, but actually, yeah, definitely, you know, having regular orgasms, you're going to be stimulating the blood flow. You're going to be stimulating, you know, the lubrication. What lubrication you have feels great anyway. Helps you sleep. It reduces your stress. It makes you look young, though you're young, all young and beautiful. For me, menopausal, it's really well, an older woman. It's helpful. <laughs> yeah. um, it, make, it boosts your immunity. You know, it's something you can do with a partner. You haven't got to have penetrative sex. If you're having penetrative sex, because not everybody is, um, something you can do, you know, they can do it to you. So, yeah, and actually quite a lot of doctors now are telling their patients to go and buy one of our sex toys, which is brilliant. Our brochure's giving out in the NHS. We created it in the NHS. We've got doctors and people 
people all up and down the country who've got our products in their clinic. They whip them out. Well, they don't whip them out, but they, they put them on the table. <laughs> Have you thought of using a vibrator? You know, and actually, it's absolutely brilliant. So, you know, it is really important. The problem is, as I said, sex is not part and parcel of cancer care. So people are just sent away with, um, unfortunately, I don't know how many of you have been actually sort of sent away with the medical dilators, which are really, really, really not nice. They're, ma they're plastic things. And therefore, people don't comply with treatment and therefore they carry on having problems with vaginal tightness. We've got some nice silicone ones, but they're not available on the NHS. But not even given advice about lubricants, or just say, go and use a bit of KY or buy some Durex or buy some over the counter. Um, and sort of, oh yeah, you can get some vaginal um, moisturiser. I mean, you actually are entitled to lubricants and vaginal moisturisers on prescription. Um, and this is something that your GP should be prescribing you too. They are available to you. Um, so that's important. The big thing for me, and I've talked about vagina health, not all lubes are the same, not all moisturisers are the same. When you're going through cancer treatments, when you're going through the menopause, you're more likely to be prone to things like thrush and bacterial vaginosis. That's the smelly, fishy discharge. And you need antibiotics for it because you've got the disruption of the pH inside the vagina because of the depleting estrogen. And therefore, you need to be careful about what you're putting inside your vagina. So lubricants and vagina moisturizers, you should be avoiding glycerin. Um, though some people are fine with glycerin, but if you know you're prone to thrush, it's a sugar, it will cause thrush. I avoid it. That's what you'll feel when you're looking at a lube. It feels tacky um, and actually it doesn't sort of doesn't stay slippery for very long. Um, Glycols, well-known vaginal irritants. They're the things when you put on a lube and you go, oh, that stung a bit, because that's actually, they're, they're not, you know, they're not great for your vagina. And parabens, they're, they're estrogenic. We shouldn't be putting those inside our vaginas. But we've got the warming lubes and the cooling lubes. Cooling lubes contain menthol, so a bit of peppermint that you rub on your vulva. Um, the warming ones actually contain what you find in chilies. I don't know about you, but I never rub a chili on my vulva or put it inside my vagina. <laughs> Um, you've got the flavoured ones are great for oral sex, but I never recommend them for any form of penetrative sex because, again, they've got sweeteners and that can cause thrush. You've got glittery ones because we all want a pink glittery... A uh, unicorn vulva. vulva. <laughs> what we all need. One of my women's health visitors said she examined a young, young girl the other day and she opened up her legs and she said, literally, she said it was pink. <laughs> <laughs> she went, what have you put on there? It was, it was something, I don't know what she'd put on there. Um, you know, so actually it's looking at unperfumed products, but it's not just lubricants and vagina moisturiser. It's the intimate hygiene products. We are awash with everything, you know, from bath bombs to douches to perfume menstrual pads to scented condoms mm -hmm. created to empower women, right? You know, so actually, you've got to be really careful because yeah. this is going to keep your vagina happy and mm -hmm. healthy, your vulval tissues happy and healthy. That then makes sex more pleasurable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, different lubes. You've got water-based lubes. You know, they're the regular ones that everybody uses and they're great. Um, you know, and actually they're compatible with sex toys and with condoms. You've got oil-based lubricants, which are great. They're longer lasting. You can't use those with condoms. You've got silicon lubes, which are brilliant, but you can't use those with silicon sex toys because um, it will damage the silicon of the sex toy. So it's actually exploring stuff. I've written extensively about this. If you want any information, it's on the website because I'm mildly obsessed. But <laughs> you have got the lubes to try and you can get them on prescription. So, you know, for me, I use a low, an, an organic vaginal moisturiser twice a week. I use Vagifem, the pessary. I actually use it three times a week. Um, but you, you can use it too. You can use it more times. Um, and, um, and I also use um, the organic oil-based lubricant because we prefer using that for sex and I like using it with our sex toys as well. And I'm, I only wash my vulva with water. So, mm. you know, I'm really... This is long-term. This is what you're going to have to do now for the rest of your life. But this is what every woman, anybody with a vagina or vulva should be doing in the country, whether you've had cancer or menopause or not. So, thank you so, so much.